I'm originally born in California, and me and my family stayed there till I was about nine or so years old. Then, we moved out to West Virginia for my dad's work, and we stayed there for about four years. And then finally, we moved to upstate New York, and that's where I still am now. I'm 23 right now, but that's besides the point. I'm just trying to give you some sort of time reference to the story that I'm going to tell you. Because when we moved to West Virginia, and I was there for about four or five years, the area of the back of our house was a thick, boggy marsh. And that is where my story takes place. I can't sit here and say that I saw any swamp monsters, or that I saw the creature from the Black Lagoon. But what I can say is that due to my explorative nature, I was in that boggy marsh multiple times, never had an issue, but then there were some times where I would get strange feelings, like I was being followed, or that something was hunting me. I say hunting because it's the same feeling you get when somebody is out to get you and you know it. Even though I would check my surroundings constantly, there are certain areas where the brush is so thick you can't exactly see more than five or 10 feet in front of you. So somebody or something could easily be on their other side of the brush and you would never know it unless you went through it. But unless you have the proper equipment or gear, making it through the brush and wading through can be very difficult depending on the season. While this feeling had come over me multiple times, I never actually saw anything until more recently before I moved. It was probably a year or so before we moved. And keep in mind, since we had moved, I had been exploring this marshy bog for quite some time. Not every day, and certainly not every season. But I would try and make it an often occurrence to go out there, get my boots on, and go exploring. Even though I had been followed, or what I assumed been followed for quite some time before, this particular event, just one time, I saw what I can only describe as large human-like shadows or figures coming at me from the bog. It's not like a horror movie where you look out into the fog and you see these large black figures coming towards you. I just saw them in the brush, watching me, and it was too dark to make out any features, but I could see them moving, wading through the thick water behind broken trees and stuff. That was enough for me because I could easily tell from their sheer size alone, in accordance to other things around them that I knew very well. These were far larger than any standard man that I would see, and being a 13, 14 year old boy at the time was incredibly frightening, considering the only weapon I kept on me at the time was a miniature pocket knife. I mainly just kept that for, well, I claimed self-defense, but who are we kidding? I probably couldn't even take down a dog with that thing. Anyway, I stopped playing in the marsh after that, and shortly after, within the year, we ended up moving up to New York. Now, I don't deal with any of that stuff, but it's still a very vivid memory from my childhood, or from my early teenagehood. Do I believe in monsters? No. Do I believe in Bigfoot? No but I cannot deny that there was definitely something out there in the marsh that didn't want me out there. What it was exactly, I'm not sure, but I am nearly certain it was not a human being. Many, many, many years ago, I used to live outside a very small suburb in Orlando, Florida. Years back before Orlando became the modern booming town and city that it currently is right now, this story predates the 2000s, so this also means that the suburb I was living had a lot more Everglades around and a lot less people, which means more wildlife and just overall a better, simpler time. This particular time, I was driving home from a friend's house when I stopped in the middle of the road because I began hearing strange noises, not from behind my car or in front of it, but to the sides of it. I stopped, rolled down my window, and listened. Off in the Everglades, if I had to guess, 50 to 100 feet, but it's hard to accurately tell, just due to the way the Everglades are. 
a very loud screaming, roaring sound. It's hard for me to pinpoint exactly how to describe it. It was like a screaming, kind of like a woman, but much, much lower in pitch, and had this deep, deep bass to it, that every time it would scream, I could feel the rumble through my body in my car. It immediately freaked me out, because I feel like I know the Everglades somewhat, and there is no known animal that makes that sound. I know cougars make a screaming noise, but I also know that it sounds nothing like what I heard then. So I continued to sit and listen, and I could tell it wasn't too far away. It just kept screaming and screaming, and no preferred pattern. It was all random, random lengths of time and duration. And then it just suddenly stopped. I took that as a good sign and good time to pull on the gas and get out of there, go back home, rest. What that was to this day, I'm not exactly sure. I've heard other weird stories about the skunk ape and other bizarre things in the Everglades, supposed swamp monsters and other things, but I never really bought into any of that. I've never seen a skunk ape myself, nor do I believe in the whole Bigfoot phenomenon but I can't dismiss the noises that I heard that night. Now, do those noises belong to the skunk ape? I don't think so, but then again, I don't know. But I can tell you I've never heard an animal make that noise before, especially with the volume and bass that it had to that roar, scream, whatever you want to call it. Whatever it was had to have been of considerable size to have that kind of lung power. That's all I can really say. I don't know if this was a Bigfoot or what this was, but I keep my mind open because it was something out there, and I know for a fact it came from the swamp, because it circled around our tent at the time, sniffed and made some grunting noises, and then walked back off. So, let me set this story for you. Back when I was a kid, we would regularly go visit my cousins who lived in Georgia at the time. We lived up in Washington State, where I would stay for the rest of the year. But every July or August, we would make a two-week vacation down there in either month. And if you know anything about Georgia, it's thick with humidity and swamps everywhere. If you live in the Pacific Northwest, or any other area of the country that doesn't deal with excruciating amounts of humidity, well, you basically just die for the entire time you're there. And since I wasn't acclimated, that's pretty much what I did, which resulted in my cousins always making fun of me. They were much more outdoorsy than I am, and still are to this day, but I do enjoy outdoor recreational activities. Although I'm not a hunter or a fisher by any means, I do enjoy camping and hiking. I can't exactly remember what year this was, but I can tell you I was somewhere around 12 or 13, and my cousins were 15 and 16. So... We were at their house, and my cousins have very, very large property. Surrounding their entire property is acres, I want to say easily 20 to 30, of just thick swamp on all three sides of their house, followed by a long road that goes out. I know it can be kind of dangerous because they said they had alligators in there before, so we never did really any much swamp exploration like I had wanted to. I mean, we had gone in there a few times but never truly in depth. So, this night, we were camping out in their backyard or on their property. From where we were in our tent, we could see the house. It was maybe a two or three minute walk, but far enough away that we felt like we were actually camping out in nature. We had a pretty large tent too. I think it was my cousin's 10-man tent. Well, we were sitting there talking with the lantern on, and that's when we began hearing brush and branches breaking from off in the swamp, coming in our direction. We were all looking at each other, wondering, what is that? My cousin, hesitating, and then quickly turning off the lantern, making it pitch dark. Then we just listened. Something very big, and I describe big because each footstep that it made shook the ground. What's disturbing was that it wasn't four steps, it was two. Pum pum, pum pum, pum pum, and that pattern. 
it just came closer and closer to our tent, where finally, it appeared to be no more than five or ten feet away, circled our tent completely, stopped, and then walked back into the swamp in a near opposite direction of which it came from. During that time, as it got close to our tent, we could hear whatever it was breathing, and it sounded like they were very strained breaths. Imagine somebody who smokes about a couple packs of cigarettes a day. It was very, very raspy and very deep in breath. Whatever it was sounded like it had huge lungs, and it came from a very large animal. Although I can't for the life of me think of any large animal that comes out of the swamp at night that walks on two legs. And at some point, right before it stopped to head off in the opposite direction to another area of swamp, it kind of grunted like you do when somebody tells you or scolds you, and you kind of do a hmm, that kind of grunt. I don't know what that was about, but my cousins and I were absolutely terrified. As soon as it left and we couldn't hear it anymore, we just grabbed the lantern and we fled back to the house, telling our families that something was out there, and we were all pretty spooked. But of course, all of our parents tried to calm us down and tell us nothing is out there, there's no such thing as swamp monsters. We didn't think it was a swamp monster, but we knew it was something that wasn't a person or any sort of animal that we knew of. It was enough that we just slept on the living room couch, and then in the morning time, we went and retreated our tent. Come morning time, we went outside to go and take our tent down, gather up all of our things like our sleeping bag and whatever it is else we had in the tent at the time. We made our way out there and we looked around the tent, and that's when we saw these massive footprints in the soft soil, or should I say soft muck, considering much of the area around this tent was grass mixed with very, very soft mud. These were massive prints, but indented enough that you couldn't really make them out unless you stood right above them. I couldn't really discern the foot. You could see that there was a large shape indented into the ground, but it wasn't like a supposed Bigfoot cast to where you could see definitive toes and a clear outline. This was just indented enough to where you could tell that something very heavy stood there or walked there. And we tried to follow the tracks and can see that it was indeed a bipedal pattern. And it did walk exactly around our tent, just as we had heard the night prior. We called both of our parents out and had them look at it. They were puzzled and believed us, but they even themselves weren't really sure what to make of it. I think all in all, they just ended up writing it off as who knows what, and that was the end of that. Now that I'm an adult, I'm pretty sure they did that to not scare us any further than we already were. But time has gone on now, and I'm in my 30s now. Both my cousins serve in the military, and I work full-time as a designer, so... There's really no time for outdoor camping, tenting, or swamp exploring. Anyway, that's my horror story from the swamps from back when I was just a kid. Enjoy. <laughs>